Hi, and welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a good break. This is our last session, but it's an important one. It's going to cover best marketing practices for providing happy, healthy puppies to new loving owners. Today in Marketing Healthy Puppies from Marketplaces to DIY, you will hear from Nicole Engelman at Good Dog and Heather Gibson from Big Hearted Breeders. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, so just a note before we start, Nicole will begin and followed by Heather. Uh, since we have two speakers for this one session, uh, please add either Nicole or Heather's name at the beginning of any questions so we know who the question is for. Thank you. Okay, Nicole is the leader, community lead at Good Dog, which is a free online platform built to help breeders seamlessly run their programs and connect with quality dog buyers from across the country. As community lead, Nicole works to grow and engage Good Dog's incredible breeder community through special programs and events. Heather is a mother of seven, including four children adopted from foster care during her 10 years as a foster parent. Her journey in life has been marked by a deep commitment to advocating for kindness, mental health awareness, and the profound impact pets can have on our well being. Driven by a love for research and learning, Heather has pursued certifications as a pet nutrition coach and animal aromatherapist. Today, Heather breeds Tonkinese and Balinese cats, as well as miniature golden retrievers, continuing her mission to enhance lives through the bond between people and their pets. Okay, let's get started. Nicole, take it away. Awesome, thank you so much, Lisa. Um, so like Lisa said, I am excited to present um, today about how Good Dog can help you showcase your commitment to healthy dogs by marketing your health testing and rep responsible practices. Um, and I know she briefly introduced me already, but I just want to say welcome to all of the attendees and how excited I am to be here presenting with all of you today. I know you've had a lot of great presentations already this morning and early this afternoon, so I appreciate everyone still giving me their time, even though I know you've sat through a bunch of presentations already. Um, like she mentioned, I have been at Good Dog for the past four years, helping to grow our incredible breeder community. And it has been just one of the best experiences of my life to watch this community grow and thrive and become what it is today. Um, so just a few things that I wanted to highlight that this presentation is gonna cover. First, it's gonna cover Good Dog's approach to health testing, where we started and how we got to where we are today, and then how we're helping breeders gain a competitive edge in today's market through health testing recognition and buyer education, both of which are extremely critical. Um, so before I get into all of those things, I just want to share a little bit about Good Dog and who we are and what we stand for. So we're guided by a mission to build a better world for our dogs and the people who love them. And some of the core pillars of that mission are supporting dog breeders like yourselves, educating the public on the immense amount of work that goes into responsible breeding practices, promoting canine health, which is going to make up the bulk of today's presentation, and then changing the conversation around getting a dog from a responsible breeder. I'm sure I don't need to tell anyone here that there is such an unfortunate stigma that still exists around dog breeders and good dog really wants to change the conversation around that, really teach the general public about why it's so critical to support responsible breeders in all that they do and what really sets responsible breeders apart. So those are some of the things that guide us at good dog um, in all that we do. And these are some of the experts that are behind the scenes in bringing to life some of the things that I'll talk about today. We partnered with the very best experts in the field of animal welfare science, veterinary science, and canine behavior. And we've worked with these experts using their decades of knowledge and experience to create our community standards that I'm gonna talk a bit about and implement a system in pursuit of that mission that I just shared. One of those experts is Dr. Brian Greenfield, who is the nation's leading expert in canine reproduction breeding management, and pediatric care. Dr. Greenfield was instrumental in developing our standards and screening right off the bat from when Good Dog first existed, um, and with a focus on ethical reproductive practices, veterinary care, health testing, and breeder policy. So a lot of what we have today is owed to him. And then we have Dr. Nate Ritter, who is our veterinary medical director at Good Dog. If you join any of our webinars and live events, he's, he's usually there with me helping to answer our community's health-related questions. He is absolutely amazing. Um, he's a member of the American Veterinary Medical Association, New York State Veterinary Medical Society. The list goes on. He is an absolutely incredible member of our team. He unfortunately could not be here today because he's on parental leave, um, but he did help me put together 
a lot of this presentation. And I will say that with a caveat, um, for any questions that come in that are canine health related, I wanna make sure you get the right answers. I'm unfortunately not the qualified person to answer those, but I will be taking special note of any of those and making sure I work with Dr. Ritter to get an answer for you. Okay, so moving on to Good Dog's approach to health testing. So every breeder on Good Dog is individually screened and recognized for responsible breeding practices. Before being approved to join Good Dog, we evaluate each breeding program to assess compliance with our community standards. So we evaluate programs in five key areas, one of them being breeding practices, one of them being the physical health of breeding dogs and puppies, another being the mental health of breeding dogs and puppies, housing environment, and then buyer education and policies. So every breeder that goes through our screening process and is approved to join Good Dog has to comply with our community standards, including our breed-specific health testing requirements, which I will touch on in just a bit, and our breeder code of ethics. So with our health testing requirements, we developed a three-level system to distinguish breeding programs based on their health testing practices. And I can share links later on to our guide to our health testing levels where all of this is laid out. There's lots to read through. I'm going to do my best to summarize it. Um, and then in addition to that, we also award health testing recognition at the individual breeding dog level. So your sires and dams who meet the, cri the criteria for their breed by providing verifiable health tests. Um, and this, this breed specific system was developed using lots of different information, some of it being publicly available information by sources including health registry databases, genetic testing companies, peer reviewed scientific journal articles, national breed clubs. That has been some of the work that I've been lucky enough to do during my time at Good Dog is work with a number of breed clubs to make sure that our health testing standards are also really reflective of what they see for their breed. Um, guidance from our advisors, like I mentioned, and other experts, and then discussions with breeders in our very own community. So all of this is kind of a culmination of a ton of different information to work out what Good Dog's approach to health testing is. I know there are so many approaches and philosophies around health testing, and what I'm going through today is strictly Good Dog's. And we compiled this data and information from all of these different places to better understand the prevalence and severity of known health conditions for each breed. Um, the methodologies and requirements accepted for recommended testing is going to, of course, vary by breed and is going to be based on guidance from relevant registries and breed clubs. But all of this is coming together with one goal in mind, which is to improve dog health and welfare. So where we landed is three levels at Good Dog. So good, which means that programs meet our entry level health testing requirements for their breed. Great, which means that programs are exceeding those health testing requirements for their breed. And then excellent, which means that programs have significantly exceeded the health testing requirements for their breed. And I say all of this because we really want to help the future dog owners that are coming to Good Dog and connecting with you um, to make responsible decisions by providing them with education and transparency into breeders practices. So this is equipping any potential dog owner to be able to ask the right questions and make an informed choice based on their preferences and their priorities and just ultimately helping people make the right decision for them. There's not a one size fits all approach to being a breeder. There's also not a one size fits all approach to being a buyer looking for a puppy. Um, and we just believe that by sharing all of this evidence based information and all of these best practices, we can provide a roadmap for breeders to take steps to strengthen their programs and encourage them to improve the health of their dogs and in turn, hopefully generations of dogs to come. Um, and these levels specifically were created to incentivize and motivate breeders who might not be able to do as much testing yet and then also recognize the breeders that are really excelling in these areas. Um, so I want to quickly share my screen. Hopefully this works for me and show you what this looks like in practice. So like I said, all of these pages on Good Dog <clears throat> are gonna be breed specific, but I thought I would just pick an easy one, Golden Retriever, to show you just one example of every single breed specific health testing requirement page that we have on our site. And these you can look at afterwards. Um, I can share a link with you where you can see it for every single breed that Good Dog recognizes. But this is what it looks like for Golden Retrievers. This is something that buyers can see to start to understand 
What is the caliber of breeders that are recognized on Good Dog? What are some of the things that they're doing in their practice that makes them responsible? So here we, in very plain terms, lay out the answer to what is health testing. I know to many of us here, that can seem like a really obvious thing, but so many buyers just don't even understand that this is something that breeders are even doing. So we wanna make sure that, again, we're giving buyers so much context to the health testing that you're doing, all that's happening behind the scenes in your program. So again, they can read more information about health testing here, how it can impact a puppy that they're considering bringing home. And then here are our health testing levels specifically for the golden retriever. So you can toggle here between excellent, great, and good. And you can see, again, these are specific to the breed and what they're at risk for. And this will tell buyers and breeders as well exactly what kind of testing needs to be done on their breeding dogs to be recognized at each level. So hopefully that's helpful for people to see. Again, this is all available on our site and this is available for every single breed recognized on Good Dog. I will stop sharing that. Hopefully that worked. And then I wanted to start walking through some of the actual products that we offer our breeders to really help them set themselves apart during a buyer search. I know the internet can be a really loud and crazy place where we're all competing for attention, especially for breeders trying to show off what those practices are that buyers might not even be aware of, might not even know to ask questions about. So we're doing a lot of work at Good Dog to make sure that buyers are understanding right from their search all of the things that you're doing to your program in regards to health testing. <clears throat> so one of those things is breeding dog badges. So beyond our screening process, we're really excited to offer breeders a way to customize their listings and highlight the work that they do for health testing their sires and dams. So these badges are very simple to earn. All breeders need to do is upload verifiable health testing files and links. Um, and then after those are uploaded, um, someone from our team will review it, get back to the breeder within two to three days and assign them their badge and their level. And what these badges do, among many things, one, they recognize breeders who are going above and beyond doing all of these amazing things for their breeding dogs, but it's also a really great trust signal to buyers. So a little later on, I'll show you what a puppy listing on Good Dog Life looks like and how all of this is incorporated to what buyers see as they're starting their puppy search. Um, but it really helps attract serious buyers and simultaneously educate the public about responsible breeding practices. Going back to the same idea, I keep harping on that buyers might not even know what these things are and therefore they might not even know why it's so amazing that responsible breeders do them. So it's really important that we're not only recognizing breeders for doing this testing, but we're providing buyers with context about what am I even looking at? Um, so I'm going to briefly share my screen again to show you what this is gonna look like from the breeder's perspective. So if you're joining and you're part of Good Dog, hopefully this looks very familiar to you. And if not, this is the back end of a breeder's dashboard. So this is all of the things that breeders can do to edit their profile, upload their litters and their breeding dogs. Um, and then I'll show you the flip side, which is the buyer facing side where all of those edits and uploads come to life. So this is a test account on Good Dog. It's mine, it's completely fake, um, but I just wanted to show you exactly how this would work on a breeder's dashboard. So here in this section, you can see all of my program sires and dams. A lot of people use this test account at Good Dog, so it is a hodgepodge of animals. Um, but for demonstration's sake, I just wanted to quickly highlight, this is one of my breeding dogs, George, who is recognized for his health testing. So if we look quickly at George, we can see all of his details. I won't get into all of this because I will get distracted, but the thing I wanted to highlight here is health. So here you can see that I have all of George's certifications, prelims, tests, all uploaded and linked. So you can either attach a file or you can link out maybe to the OFA database, whatever you prefer. You can, of course, when you're uploading, block out sensitive information. So you can block out your address, things like that. Um, we make it really easy to do so. So I've already uploaded those tests um, and then I will be essentially awarded my badge within two to three days after someone from the Good Dog screening team has a chance to review and assign a level. So 
This is what it looks like when one of your breeding dogs has the badge. So again, this is just on the breeder's back end. I'll show you what it looks like on the buyer side, um, but it's indicating that I'm meeting the good criteria for my breed. And then if I wanna go ahead and add it for this dog, I won't go through all of the testing, but here you can see maybe someone started here uploading testing and got a little bit distracted. Um, so all you have to do is upload those and then set it to live so that those results can be displayed on your profile. That's a re really critical piece to these badges is making sure that not only are you getting recognized for your practices, but you're actually linking out to what those tests and results are, again, for the sake of transparency for buyers. Okay, heading back to my slide. Another thing I wanted to briefly highlight that we actually just introduced at Good Dog a few months ago, and this is an exciting thing we've worked on, is Dashboard Insights. So using that dashboard that I just showed, um, breeders can actually keep track of their performance on Good Dog, meaning they can improve their search visibility, their ranking, um, and essentially just take more actions to find great homes for their puppies. And I won't dwell on what all of those performance insights are because it's a little out of focus for this presentation, but one thing that is really critical to us um, in how breeders perform on Good Dog is uploading health testing. That's one of the performance factors that we take into account when we're doing search result ranking. So breeders that upload health testing, as you can see here in this little image, um, they'll actually find more success on Good Dog. So they'll enjoy boosted visibility in search ranking, um, among other things. So it's really important to um, upload that testing and it's something that we're actually really rewarding breeders for doing. Okay. And then educating buyers, this is kind of the other piece of the puzzle, right? We're doing all of this work to help breeders market themselves, market their health testing practices, but it's almost all for nothing if we're make, not making sure that buyers are taking advantage of it and understanding exactly what all of these things mean that we're enabling breeders to show about their program. So it's incredibly important to us at Good Dog that the buyers we're connecting breeders with they aren't just serious about getting a puppy, but they're also really educated about all that goes into a responsible program. Like I mentioned earlier, there are so many misconceptions about breeders that we're working to combat. And it's really important to us that anyone we're connecting you with, we want to make sure that they have a full understanding of the privilege and excitement of getting a puppy from a responsible breeder and what that means. So when buyers come to Good Dog, they're immediately met with communications about the quality of the breeders on our platform, the caliber of the breeders, what kind of screening process they had to go to in order to be recognized on our platform. So that's trust setting right off the bat. And um, they're also learning about our screening process. Um, so those are things I'm not gonna dive too deeply into today, but we wanted to highlight some of the things that we're sharing with buyers on their puppy search. So as soon as they arrive at gooddog.com, maybe they have a breed in mind already, maybe they don't, they're going to be met with a lot of information about health testing practices and how the breeders on our platform are doing that. So one way we do that is before the search even begins, buyers are able to actually filter their puppy search based on parent dog health testing. So in that top image you can see here, um, buyers can search by good level health testing, great or excellent, if that's something that is really a factor in their search. And then our puppy listings also prominently feature information about a breeder's health testing practices and make sure that that information is conveyed transparently to buyers. So I will share one more time, last time I promise, <laughs> and show you what a listing looks like now on Good Dog. <clears throat> we actually spent a lot of time in the past few months redesigning these listings and making sure that health testing information is super, super prominent. So this is a real puppy that is listed on Good Dog. I picked him because I love miniature schnauzers and I thought he was very, very cute with his little beard. So this is Dune. Um, and as soon as I start scrolling down, I can immediately see that this breeder has uploaded health testing for both of the parent dogs and then that's gonna earn the puppy a health testing designation as well. So this is just gonna indicate that this is a puppy that comes from parents with two great levels. Um, also in case it's helpful or anyone's curious, if you upload testing for a sire and then that level is excellent and then for the dam, the level is great, the puppy is gonna have the lowest level um, designation. So just wanted to 
put that out there in case there were questions about that. Then later on, we have what's included with the puppy, and we talk about some of the breeders' practices that, again, indicate the health of a program. So vaccinations and deworming, early socialization, a vet check, um, initial potty training. And this is something that breeders can actually customize based on what they're doing for their puppies. And then here is my favorite section. This is, again, something we redesigned a few months ago to make it super prominent. So this is where you meet the puppy's parents. We have done tons of research with buyers, and through that research, we learned that, yes, they're so excited to look at really adorable puppy photos and learn about your puppies, but they are equally as excited, if not more, sometimes to learn about the parents because a puppy is unfortunately not a puppy forever, and this is really where buyers start to get an idea of what is my puppy going to be like when he or she is older, um, what can I expect them to look like or act like, um, so these sections are actually really, really powerful ways to kind of bring your listings over to the finish line and bring them to life. <clears throat> so here you can see information about dad, Oliver, and this is where that badge factors in that I had mentioned. So this breeder has uploaded all of her required health testing for the miniature Schnauzer breed, and she is at the great level. And if I'm a buyer and I click here to view more details, it's going to bring up all of the tests and the results. So again, this is super transparent. It's as if you took a peek into the breeder's filing cabinet, so to speak. Um, and again, this is really just showing buyers that you are going the extra mile to have the right testing on your dogs and that you are so transparent about it. And like I keep saying, one of the intentions of this, not only to help breeders really be recognized for what they're doing, but to spark questions. I don't expect many of the average person to know what myotonia congenita schnauzer type testing is. I don't even think I pronounced that correctly, but it's a really great way to spark questions with your breeder, understand what they did for their breeding dogs to really ensure any heritable conditions are prevented. So this is what buyers will see. And then if they hover over this to learn more, they're again gonna be hit with one of those little blurbs there it goes. You can't get it. One of those little blurbs about health testing and what it actually is. Same thing for mom. We're going to have her health testing levels here. We're going to have a little bit of a blurb about her, any accomplishments. And just like for dad, all of her tests are going to be linked out here for the full results. And then this will bring you to the breed specific um, health testing requirement page that I showed you for golden retrievers. But this one's going to bring the buyer to the miniature schnauzer page so they understand what the breeder did for those tests. So again, this is a really exciting way to kind of show off all of the things that you are doing behind the scenes for your program. I know sometimes with people looking for puppies, they are so focused on the puppy. And at Good Dog, of course, we want them to be focused on the puppy and your beautiful litters, but we don't want them to also lose sight of these amazing things that are happening behind the scenes that all of the breeders on our platform are doing to have responsible programs. So that's why there's a wealth of information in all of these listings. It's not just for puppy photos and a link to message you. It's we really want them to understand that anyone coming in contact with you should understand all of the things that are going into your practices. Um, so I will stop sharing that and go back to my slide. And I thought this was a really powerful quote from a member of our community, just kind of bringing all of this full circle with how it's impacted breeders with all of the tools that we give them for health testing recognition. So this is from Carrie, one of our community members, who thinks that all of this is really important to keep your breed safe, healthy, and maintain the quality of the breed standard. All future buyers should have knowledge that their future puppy is coming from properly tested sires and dams. And I just wanted to close with a few more things about Good Dog for anyone who is completely new and has never heard of us before. So we are a platform built to support breeders in all aspects of their programs. We offer a number of exclusive benefits to our community. So legal support, including free sample dog contracts and legal webinars led by our team of lawyers who are amazing. Um, we offer a ton of breeder education. We have a library of webinars curated by canine health experts. We have a ton of articles, a podcast. We want to make sure that learning is really accessible to our community, no matter what level they are in breeding or where they're located. And that's something that's very important to us. 
community. We offer breeder to breeder support and guidance. I'm biased because I lead our community, but I think they are just such an amazing and special group of people. Um, and they're always willing to lend a hand and help one another, whether it's with whelping health, breeding questions, raising litters, anything. Um, so we're really proud of the community that we have at Good Dog. And then discounts, everyone's favorite thing. I know health testing is not the most accessible thing for everybody. And we wanna make sure that we are helping give back to breeders who are giving so much as best as we can. So we offer a number of health testing and puppy care discounts from our partners. Those are exclusive for members of our community. Um, but we're always working to grow those partnerships and bring breeders the best discounts possible. And then lastly, what Good Dog is, is simply a place to place your puppies. And we offer breeders a really incredible program management software to help you list your litters, connect with buyers from across the country, get to know those buyers in a really safe and secure way, securely accept your puppy payments, you don't have to worry about scams, and also enjoy all of that with 24-7 support from our incredible team. I'm not sure if there are any good breeders in the audience today, but if you have ever had an interaction with one of your good dog support specialists, you know they are just the most amazing, most helpful group of people. You're always met with an answer by a real person, um, so can't say enough great things about them. And I want to just leave everyone with this thought um, because there is such a big world of health testing and not one person is going to have all of the answers or the best approach. Um, and I just want to emphasize that everything we're doing at Good Dog is just the beginning of our work towards improving canine health and well-being. And we consider all of this to be sort of a living document, so to speak, that's subject to change as scientific advances are made, new heritable diseases and their causative mutations are identified, new and improved screening tests become available. Um, and also as we just continue to hear feedback from our community and our mission with all of these levels and our whole approach to health testing in general is directly linked to that overall mission of building a better world for our dogs and the people who love them and encourage and support all breeders who are on their journey from good to great to excellent, no matter where they fall on that journey. Um, and before I pass things over to Heather, I just want to leave my contact information up for everybody. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Good Dog and applying to join our community, you can visit gooddog.com slash join, or you can call the number on the screen or send us an email. I also invite all of you to follow us on Facebook. It's at Good Breeder Center. Um, and join our Facebook Lives to learn more about our community and everything that we offer. And thank you all so much for your time. I have loved talking about this with all of you. And I think I'm going to pass things over now to Heather for her presentation. Thank you, Nicole. That was an awesome presentation. Um, Good Dog does so many great things for the breeder community. So thank you for being here, Nicole. So I'm going to be talking about marketing more in the DIY, do-it-yourself uh, realm. My name is Heather Gibson, and I'm a certified animal aromatherapy specialist and a certified clinical uh, or a certified pet nutrition coach. But really me, what I do isn't really that important. We're going to jump into marketing because we are short on time. So buckle up, get out a piece of paper, take notes as fast as you can. I understand this will be up for later. So uh, just be ready. This is going to be a lot of fun. And I'm going to talk about something first in marketing that is not often talked about. So to kind of get ready for that, I want you to watch this video and tell me what you think it has to do with marketing. That's not good. Oh, I don't need this. I'm already late. Somebody will come. Anybody out there? Do you have a phone? No. Sorry. Somebody! Hello? There are two people stuck on an escalator and we need help. Now. Would somebody please do something? Help! 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 <laughs> I don't believe this. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> no, 
Well, nothing else left to do. See. Hello? Hey, don't worry about it. I'll fix it in a second. <laughs> he said he could fix it. <laughs> All right. All right. That's more like it. He says he can fix it. Okay, I want you to think about that just for a minute, how it relates to marketing and especially to breeding in the market right now. How many of you guys have been told that the market is terrible, that you can't sell puppies, that it's just the worst timing to be a breeder right now? We're going to talk a bit, little bit about how that probably greatly impacts your ability to market your puppies and get across the message that you want to with your puppy families. So I really believe that every solution is an idea away. Have you ever heard that concept before? It's a really powerful one for every problem in your life. So let's dive into this really quick. This is something that I normally do in a two day boot camp. So you guys are going to get it in the next three minutes. So we're going to talk about the mind model. Basically, it was a, a model developed by Thurman Fleet, who taught it to Bob Proctor, taught it to Leslie Householder, and then mentored me. So we're going to talk about the different parts of your mind. You guys all know a little bit about conscious, subconscious, and how it affects your body. But let's just run through it really quickly. The conscious body adds awareness or your conscious mind does. It adds meaning. So if you get a bill in the mail, that is a neutral thing that happened. And it depends on what meaning you assign to it, that then it has an emotion. So maybe you're getting a bill for something you're really excited to get and pay for. You've got the money. So it's super easy to be like, great, I get to pay for this. And then it's going to come. I'm so excited. Or the bill might be at a time where you don't have as much money and it, you give it a negative impact based in your conscious mind. So the, the act itself has no real, it's a, it's a neutral thing that just happens to you. We're going to talk more about that, especially with puppies. So your conscious mind is able to accept or reject ideas and it can create new ideas. So it has the ability to create new ideas. The subconscious does those automatic things that we don't even think about. Breathing, heartbeats, sometimes driving to work when we're a little bit tired or thinking about something too deeply, we just end up where we're supposed to be. The subconscious cannot reject ideas. So once an idea gets in your subconscious mind, it can't automatically reject them. It requires some work to change that idea. And it responds to thoughts charged with emotion. And we're going to talk a little bit how that all plays into things. So then our body carries out our behaviors, our health conditions, our actions, and that leads to our results. Now, this may seem a little bit crazy so far, so let's get it a little bit more applicable to you guys. So we look at our results using our five senses. So speaking as a puppy breeder, you see that you have a litter on the ground, they're six weeks old, you can hear them, you can, um, obviously you're working with them, you probably don't taste your puppies, but you can, you can smell them. And depending on how we use those, you know, that sensory inload that we have reacts into actions. So let's say with that example puppies, we decide, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to sell these puppies. They're five weeks old. They go home in three weeks. I cannot handle any more puppies at my house. This is awful. So your subconscious mind, you have all this anxiety and it gets built up. And basically your subconscious mind is designed to carry out what you tell it to. So think of it like a computer program that runs in the background or um, in my foster parenting years, I was in therapy a lot with my kids and they talked about them like soldiers. So you give a soldier a, a direction to go out and do, and they go out and they follow it. And that is their job. And they do not deviate from what you tell them to. 
So the fascinating thing about our subconscious mind, and this has been proven with science, is that it wants us to be right. And it feels safe when we're right. So if we tell them that we can't sell puppies, we actually close off the ability to see different things. We're, we just go about doing what we think is possible. And then we get our results. It's kind of fascinating how we do that to ourselves. So how do we change that? Very briefly, we have a new thought that comes into play. We think about it. We think about what it will look like, what we want it to be. And then as we get emotionally involved with that, so it's repetition they've shown or emotion, then it's able to become a part of who we are and how we think. And then it results in that outcome. So here's the tricky part though. And again, we're covering this really quickly. Here you are with your program, your soldier that's saying, oh my gosh, the puppy market is so hard. I can't sell anything right now. And then you get this new idea. Maybe the puppy market is different. What if I looked at the puppy market as different, that I have to do different things that I've never done before, and then I can be successful. So you start thinking about it. You start with repetition and it becomes part of your subconscious. But do you notice here now you've got your old program of I can't sell puppies and I can with different behaviors and they're in there and they are battling each other. So you've got this discord going on because you've got two things fighting in your brain. And I don't know if you've ever recognized this happening in your life, but if you get a little bit of curiosity when things are going in a different way, you might notice this. And you get to what's called in this model, a terror barrier. So terror, you're scared, you're not sure what to go forward. It causes discomfort and anxiety. And guess what most people do here? They go back, they go back to their old belief and they never see the change that they want to. And it's really important that you guys are doing new things that you've never done before that make you feel uncomfortable if you want new results. So I just wanted to preface that before getting in some details about marketing, because it's really important that that's understood that the event plus the response equals the outcome. And so you just got to think about what you want to feel and how you want to do that differently. I really recommend that you pay attention to what you're doing with your brain, how you're up leveling yourself and treating yourself like a business person. So retreats, audiobooks, podcasts, whatever it takes to kind of help up level the way you're thinking and push yourself into a little bit of a different zone will really make a huge difference really in all areas of your life. Okay, let's get into what you typically would think about with marketing strategy. When you think about your brand, what you do, you need a heartbeat. What is your brand about? And you do have to differentiate yourself from other breeders because I, I hear a lot of time when I'm consulting with breeders or when I'm reaching out and talking with breeders that the biggest problem on the market is that there's so many backyard breeders with low prices that they they can't compete. And I want you to remember that mind model that we just talked about. It's not that you can't compete. You have to stand out. You have to show how you're different. So you got to figure out some of these. If you want to take a screenshot, we're not going to dive deep into this today because we don't have time. But you want to think about what your vibe, your value, your culture is. What is your brand promise? What do you stand for as a breeder? What is most important to you? So for me, health is number one. Embark is one of the best tools in my tool bucket to make sure I've got that good health. And I'm going to talk about it with my clients and talk about genetic diversity and all the different things, because that is what I stand for is a healthy, outgoing, loving puppy. Then you need to make sure people know who you are. I recommend you come up with 10 statements. And number one, we're going to put on health testing because really that can help you stand out from the backyard breeders that so many of us are concerned about competing against. You're really not competing against them because you're very different. You just need to showcase that. Um, you can come up with a foundational message. 
But let's talk about a few ways you can stand out that will really make a big difference in your marketing. Number one, our world is visual. It's not perfect, unfortunately. We can't show how healthy our puppies are with the picture, really. We can't show how amazing their temperament is, really. Um, so we have to do a really good job with our visual world. And that comes down to puppy pictures. Please, if you don't get anything out from this, up-level your puppy pictures to showcase the health of your puppies. So these are some pictures I actually took off the internet. I pulled them off. These are real pictures of people trying to sell dogs. Now out of these three, which one looks the most healthy? Just think about that. And I, I'm sure a lot of you guys on here already know this and are so much better with it. Here's a few more. You want a dog that's giving you eye contact. You want good lighting. You want to show off that shiny coat that they have. If your breed is supposed to have a shiny coat, you want to show those breed um, those breed standards that you want by doing the different things that you need to to highlight them in your pictures. Pictures are so, so, so important. So it doesn't need to be expensive. I know we've already talked about genetic testing and how it can be expensive. You can hire a, a high school or a college student. Find out someone that's really interested in photography. Look at getting an intern in a college that's doing photography that needs some college hours and will you know, charge less for it. Ask a friend. If you go on my website, you can see my photographer is a friend. She charges the most ridiculously low prices for me. And she does an amazing job at puppy pictures. So if you're looking at selling online, honestly, puppy pictures are just one of the most key parts that you can get right in telling your story about who you are. You can do it yourself. Get tutorials. Ask um, fellow breeders that you love and talk to them about how they're doing what they're doing. A couple tips. Everybody knows about Canva now. So I, a lot of you are probably Canva experts. It's a great tool. I use Canva. Pick Monkey was one I used before I got really heavy into Canva, and now I don't really use it, but it's another tool out there. Totsie is one I learned from a fellow breeder that's amazing to add on cute little things about how old they are and different things to make it look even more kind of cutesy without a, a whole lot of technical knowledge about things. Okay, we're going to talk about websites now. Okay, websites. If you're going to invest money in marketing, besides pictures, I would say website is probably the ne next best place to put things. So let's talk about that. It makes you a respectable, legitimate authority in your area, and it's the home court advantage. So what do I mean by home court advantage? When you have a website, you can't get shut down like you can on social media. You know, there's all those other places where they have control over it. Your website is one of the only things you have ownership of and control of. Not to say that it can't have problems, but you can get those fixed in a way you can't with other things. Um, your email list is another way that really helps you own things, have an ownership in the names and so that you can market directly to them. Uh, Google you want to rank high in Google with your website. So there's a thing called keyword blogging. We're going to run through this really quickly and I'm going to give you a resource for more help at the end. But basically Google ranks sites based on these keywords that people type in. So when people type in a word to Google, the that exact key phrase is what Google helps them find. And so you can do it this way where you kind of look or I have a very advanced tool called SEMrush. It costs me about $200 a month to have. And I can pull up exactly how much traffic it's getting and how hard it is to rank in that keyword. And I took my site from like seventh page to first page um, just a few years ago during COVID, like after the whole boom, I switched breeds and uh, I was able to go from seven to one. So here's that resource I mentioned. If you want to take a quick um, snapshot of this, you put in a little information. I will send you the keywords for your breed so that you can do keyword blog posting so that you can rank higher in Google. And if you don't know what a blog post is, it's just another page on your website with basically an article. 
And when you build up those pages with articles, they call them a, a blog that you can really highlight your health testing and how your program is different. So this is a great way to do blogs about the Embark tests you run, the OFAs you do, how you stand out with health testing and why you're different. Uh, another really key thing is called a lead magnet. Again, we're really short on time. So here's mine. You see my website, I have a lead magnet right here, five things you don't know. Something like that is a great way to come in. And basically I created a document in Canva and what it does is it just has a few tips there. It creates a funnel of leads. Once I have their email, I can um, educate them about my program. I can talk about my health testing. I can talk about the puppies coming up. I can talk about the parents' health testing of the upcoming litters. And that really makes it powerful in order to be marketing and not lose the people that were interested because a lot of times people look at a site, but they don't come back to buy for a while. So this keeps them, I, I stay top of mind with them by doing this. So here's another resource. It's the same one as before. If you fill it out, I'm doing a week long free uh, week challenge on how to build a lead magnet. So if you fill this out, I'll give you all the information and we'll walk through how to do it. It's really not that hard. Um, and if you don't know how to put it on your website, I can show you a little bit about that too. Okay, let's talking about going to their court. Remember, when you leave your home court advantage, you're in a different territory. Sometimes it's hostile because not all people like breeders, as you know, and there's sometimes a lot of shame that we take on associated with that, which is a whole nother discussion. But it's important that you know when you when you leave your website that there's different rules and you have to do things differently. And so uh, that's why I really love having a website, especially in this day and age. So you may be thinking, okay, Heather, I'm ready to do some social media. Where do I start? If you're brand new and you are not on any platforms, I would actually recommend starting with TikTok or YouTube. And here's why. Some people may completely disagree with me. But my thought process is Instagram and Facebook are becoming more and more uh, unkind, I guess, or unfriendly towards breeders. There's a lot more rules you have to walk through. So a lot of breeders are getting their account shut down for really doing the same thing they've been doing for years. And TikTok and YouTube seem a little bit more kind to us and open to us at this point. And so I do think those are great ones to start on if you've never started on a platform before. But if you're already on Instagram, I would recommend sticking with that and maximizing it. Really take it as far as you can before you do another platform. So start one platform at a time. The biggest thing about any social media is you have to be consistent. You have to have to be consistent. So reels are the big thing. You can do it with Splice, CapCut, or um, right in the app. You can do a lot of those reels. Hashtags, we're going to skip that for today. We'll do that another time. Um, other places, so outside sources. Um, here are a couple thoughts or options. And uh, you can take a screenshot of this really quick. And then it is time for questions. So I'm going to turn the time back over to Lisa as my timer went off so that we can get into questions here with Nicole. Thank you so much, Heather and Nicole. Those were great presentations. I learned so much. I was copiously taking notes because I can't learn enough about marketing, especially something so important as healthy puppies for good owners. So, okay, let's go to the questions. Uh, we've got a couple in here. We'll start with Nicole's questions. Um, so here's one. Uh, does Good Dog offer contract support for breeders who place a dog that has a genetic issue or health issue that may develop? Yeah, I saw that question come in. Really interesting. Is it okay if I sh share my screen quickly? Sure. Okay, let's see if I can get this up. Um, so this is kind of what I was talking about earlier with um, our legal, our sample legal contracts. So I think what might be helpful for this person asking is our non-refundable puppy deposit contract. We also, I believe, have a health guarantee 
in here as well. But what's really great about these um, mock contracts, so to speak, is that you can actually personalize it with anything that's unique to your program. So our team of lawyers created this as a jumping off point for breeders. I know this is not going to be a perfect copy and paste for every single program, and that's kind of the point. So here we've actually identified in yellow all of the places where you want to personalize it with your information that's unique to your program and what's important to you. So in this person's case, maybe you want to add some information about a puppy's specific condition before you're sharing that with a buyer and accepting a payment from them. Um, so that would be the place to do it. Okay, great for that. Um, also, uh, here's another question. Uh, where can I find info uh, on the Good Dog platform if breeders test their puppies? Is there a section where breeders can add additional information for things like that? That's a really great question. Um, it's something that we don't currently offer, but something that we definitely want to explore in the future. So right now we just recognize health testing for parent dogs. But in the listing example that I showed earlier in my presentation, there's an about section for every puppy that breeders can personalize with any kind of information they want. So a lot of breeders use it to talk about the puppy's personality or their looks, but that would be a really perfect way to talk about some of the puppy health testing that you've done and just add it right there. And then that would be at the top of the listing. So one of the first things that buyers see. Okay, we'll have one more question for Nicole. Um, in addition to health testing, what else does Good Dog look at as part of the screening process? It's a great question. It's a very big question. Um, so like I kept saying in my presentation, there's no one size fits all for what makes a breeding program responsible. I think there are all different types of breeders, all different types of programs, and we never want the way that we approach screening at Good Dog to feel really prescriptive, um, which is why we're able to use these five key areas to really look at breeding programs holistically. So like I said, every member of our community has to pass through that screening process and then meet or exceed those community standards to join Good Dog. So we're looking comprehensively at five key aspects of a program. So breeding practices, being a responsible breeder requires an enormous amount of planning and skill and expertise. And it's definitely not as simple as maybe some people think where you just put two healthy dogs outside and see what happens. Um, so it's really critical that we're taking all of those choices into consideration, the heritable health um, conditions that affect every breed, every individual dog's testing, um, parents' temperaments, their health, their pedigrees, um, and their confirmation in order to make the best matches. Then we have the physical health of the breeding dogs and puppies. That one's pretty self-explanatory, but it's just kind of contributing to the fact that responsible breeders are always going to put the physical health of their puppies first. And healthy breeding dogs are more likely, of course, to produce healthy puppies, which is really important to us. Um, and that's really what the bulk of my presentation was about, is recognizing those health testing practices that are ensuring a healthier generation of puppies. And then we have the mental health of the breeding dogs and puppies. It was really important for us to make sure that those two areas where we're evaluating a program between physical and mental health are separate. So breeders that are responsible are ensuring that their breeding dogs are emotionally cared for as well as physically. Their cognitive needs are met. They're receiving appropriate stimulation, activity, social interaction. Same applies for the puppies to make sure that they're not only breeding physically healthy puppies, but behaviorally sound puppies as well, which are not mutually exclusive. Um, and then environment. So responsible breeders ensure that their puppies and their dogs have access to clean, comfortable and safe environments so that they can really thrive. Um, and that's a really critical factor that influences physical and mental health as well. So all of these things are really connected, can't have one without the other. And then lastly, buyer education and policies. So while we are doing a great deal on our end to make sure that buyers are educated about what responsible breeders do in general, every program is going to be different. Every breeder is going to have maybe different policies well, as it pertains to health guarantees or deposits. Um, so we just want to make sure that every person on our platform is spending a lot of time with their potential puppy buyers to guide them to making the right decision for them. They're also spending time vetting those buyers to make sure that every dog and every potential 
person that will be a home for the dog is the right fit. Um, and then also doing the best that they can to ensure a smooth transition to the new home. I know that is an enormously stressful thing on a puppy. Um, so just breeders who do all that they can to ensure those smooth transitions and have successful transitions into their new home. And then this is one of the most important things of all for us, um, responsible breeders that make a lifelong commitment to their dogs. So whether it's providing ongoing support to their owners. I know people in our community who have been talking to the same buyer for the past 10 to 15 years, and it's working with a breeder is not this transactional thing. And we want people in our community to attest to that and people who are coming to meet our breeders to understand that. Um, so providing ongoing support if anything ever comes up and then above all taking back the puppies if they ever need to be rehomed for whatever reason. So all of these areas are assessed individually and kind of make up our assessment as a whole. Um, so I know that was a long winded response, but I wanted to make sure I covered all of that. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much, Nicole. Um, here's welcome. a question for, for Heather. Um, how would you go about building an email list? Uh, where, where would I go or how do I collect them? Yeah, that's a great question. A lot of people are curious how you build an email list because they're so powerful. I see so many breeders that actually sell their puppies with very little following on social media by just giving great content to their email list and keeping people engaged and staying top of mind. So that um, the lead magnet that we talked about is a great way and probably the most common way to get someone's email. You also get them if someone applies on your site or you, you know, you're able to collect it that way. But you get a lot more people if you have a couple of those lead magnets that provide value that people put in their email to get. And then you're able to continue to nourish them and support them through their journey. And honestly, whether they buy a puppy from me or not, I'm just happy to help educate them. That's great. Yeah, lead magnets are important and lead gens are good as well. Um, I've done some where I've offered, say, a, a free uh, ebook uh, with asking for the email and giving educational information about dog breeds or breeding practices or that sort of thing. People are always hungry for very edu educational, good content. Um, here's uh, another question, Heather, how do I find the 10 statements? The 10 statements for the lead magnet, maybe? Is that what? Oh, oh, the 10 statements about your program. Okay, yeah. so we did th throw up a slide for a minute about 10 statements about your program. I suggested one should definitely be health, but uh, about you, it's really about what makes your program different. So for me, I like to talk about my journey into breeding, how I was a foster parent for children that had anxiety and honestly some pretty severe mental health issues and how much of a different pets made in my life and in theirs and the journey that that took us on. So highlight why you got into breeding is a great one of those 10 things. So it's really individually up to you, but it's a way for you to show how you're different than every other person that breeds your breed or that breeds different breeds in your area. Um, it's what makes you unique. So if you need some help, like coming up with some ideas, feel free to find me on social media and message me under Big Hearted Breeders. I'm happy to help you tease that out. Okay, that's great. I have I have one final question for you. Um, so can you give me an example of a, a TikTok video that you, you think has been successful or as an example for people who uh, want to go over there and try it? Well, yeah, there's a lot of them that are out there that are funny. I mean, honestly, you just be a little creative and put it out there. And the thing with TikTok or Instagram or YouTube is it's interesting what goes viral. It just takes consistent effort. So any of the platforms want you to post at a regular interval. Don't freak out. But right now, the kind of the suggested one is five to seven stories a day which are those short little ones that you put um, that are just kind of tidbits of your life and then one real a day. But one we just did was, so in the debate, and I, this is nothing political to do with this at all, but there was a statement that Donald Trump made about eating the dogs. And if you're on Instagram or TikTok, you've probably seen a lot of breeders spoof that with the reactions the dog has had to the comments he made, which uh, honestly has been hilarious to watch. But 
it, it kind of varies depending on the time. There's something called trending sounds at the time. Um, but really just go out there and put out there who you are and what you do consistently. And that's really what makes the biggest difference. Great, thank you so much for that. There were lots of cat videos as well that were pretty funny. So um, we're gonna wrap it up. Um, thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Heather. Uh, that brings us to the conclusion of the Canine Health Summit Puppy DNA Testing. Uh, this is the third edition of the Canine Health Summit that Embark has sponsored. Uh, thank you again, speakers, all the speakers, for sharing your vast knowledge and expertise with us. We appreciate it. Thank you to LabRoots for hosting this interactive platform. And I also want to thank all the attendees uh, for joining us today and for your very interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today will be addressed, and we will contact you via the uh, email you provided during registration. Uh, as a remember, uh, as a gift to all registrants, we are offering a discount on the Embark for Breeders litter packages, both the small size, four to seven swabs, and the large size, eight to 11. And this discount is the very first time that we've offered it on this product. Use the discount code CHS2024 at checkout. Uh, there is a link in the Embark booth room that I showed you earlier, the big billboard there that uh, you just click on that to uh, shop now. You can also go to our website at EmbarkVet.com. The discount is valid for one week until October 1st. The summit can be viewed on demand for the next 12 months. Uh, LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. I think it's pretty soon. Uh, we encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Um, I've just been notified that on demand is already active. Um, if you have further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at breeders at embarkvet.com. Again, thanks for joining us and have a great day. <laughs>